All right, let's dive into some pretty cool space stuff today. Gravitational lensing, it's a, it's a thing. It is a thing. And you've given me two, two scientific papers about this system called J7721 plus 8842. This is, this is a wild one. Basically, we've got these two galaxies, mm. and they're lined up just right, so they act like a magnifying glass. Yeah. They're bending the light. Like a cosmic magnifying glass? From a quasar that's way behind them, like a like a cosmic billiard ball game, but with light instead of the ball. That's a good way to put it. Uh. Yeah. The light is taking a really strange path because of those two galaxies. So they're calling it a compound lens. Right. It's like having two lenses, two lenses working together, like how eyeglasses have compound lenses for a clearer image. Exactly. But can we can we back up a sec? I want to make sure I get what gravitational lensing even is. Yeah, of course. So imagine imagine a bowling ball sitting on a trampoline. Okay. The bowling ball, that's like a galaxy, a really massive object, and it creates a dip, you know, in the trampoline fabric. Mm. That's kind of like how really massive objects warp space-time, just like Einstein predicted. So it's not just the object itself, it's the way it changes space around it. Exactly. Like the bowling ball warping the trampoline. Exactly. And if you were to, like, roll some marbles across the trampoline, they would curve around that dip that the bowling ball made, right? Mm -hmm. And light does the same thing. When light passes through warped space-time, it bends. Mm. And that's that lensing effect. So so the light from behind the object, behind the galaxy, like from a quasar, it right gets here. bent around it. That's how we see multiple images sometimes of the same object. Exactly, precisely. Yep. And in J1721 plus 8842, it's even more complex because there are two galaxies doing the bending. It's like two bowling balls on the trampoline instead of one. Wow. So at first... Like a double warp? Yeah, it's like, yeah, double warp. Hmm. At first, when astronomers first saw this system, yeah. they thought it was just one galaxy, an elliptical galaxy, lensing a quasar. Mm -hmm. And it made like four distorted images. Mm -hmm. But then, over a couple of years of watching it, mm -hmm. they noticed uh, some strange things. Like what? Well, first, the brightness of those four images was changing, like subtly. As if the quasar itself was flickering a bit. Interesting. And then they found two more images. Wow. Much fainter. So six images in total? Six in total, yeah. And at first they thought, well, maybe these are from a different quasar. Right. But it took it took a lot of work combining data from different telescopes, including James Webb, yeah. to figure out that, no, all six images are actually from the same quasar. Mm. But its light is taking these multiple paths because of those two galaxies. So so the light's like doing loops around. It's like it's like he's playing pinball. Wow. Bouncing around those two galaxies. So that's what makes it a zigzag. Exactly. And that's why they call it an Einstein zigzag lens. Wow. This is the first time we've ever seen this kind of lensing. It's visually pretty cool. Yep. But I have to ask, why why should I care about this if I'm not an astronomer? What's the big deal with this? Well, this Einstein zigzag, it's it's not just a cool picture. It can help us figure out some really big mysteries about the universe. Like what? Like dark energy and how the universe oh, is expanding. Oh, dark energy. Okay. Yeah. yeah, dark energy is a big deal. But remind me why. How can the system help us understand something so massive and mysterious? Well, we think dark energy is the thing that's making the universe expand faster and faster. Mm -hmm. And understanding dark energy, that's like the key to figuring out what's going to happen to the universe in the future. Like, is it going to keep expanding? Yeah. Will it keep expanding? Will it slow down? Right. Maybe even rip itself apart. That's called the big rip. Big rip. Yikes. Yeah. So the zigzag lensing, it gives us this opportunity to use some uh, some really powerful techniques to measure things like distances yeah. and how fast the universe is expanding. Yeah. These techniques are called uh, time delay cosmography and uh, dual source plane lensing. OK, uh, those sound pretty intense. Can you break those down a little bit? Sure. So time delay cosmography. That has to do with those flickering images of the quasar. Okay, yeah, yeah. So because the light from the quasar is taking different paths around those galaxies, right. those flickers, they show up in each image at slightly different times. It's like a cosmic echo. Yeah, exactly. And by measuring those delays, we can calculate the distances between the quasar, the two galaxies, and us really accurately. Wow. So just by looking at the time it takes for light to reach us, we can measure distances across billions of light years. That's right. That's incredible. And that distance information, that helps us figure out the Hubble constant, which tells us how fast the universe is expanding. And the expansion rate, that's directly related to how much dark energy there is. So the more dark energy, the 
faster it expands. Exactly. So if we can figure out how fast it's expanding, we get a better idea of how much dark energy is out there. Okay, that makes sense. You also mentioned dual source plane lensing. What's that about? So that one is, uh, it's a bit more complicated, but the basic idea is that the second galaxy, the one farther away, yeah. it's not just lensing the quasar's light. Mm -hmm. It's also being lensed by the galaxy in front of it. It's like lensing on top of lensing. It's lenses all the way down. That's a great way to put it, yeah. So this double lensing, it creates another Einstein ring. Mm -hmm. Remember that reddish arc in the images? Mm -hmm. And the size of that ring, compared to the ring made by the quasar's light, that tells us something about how space itself has stretched and distorted over time. Okay, hold on. How can the size of these rings tell us about how space has stretched? It's kind of like, um, imagine drawing two circles on a balloon, one small, one big. As you inflate the balloon, both circles get bigger, but the bigger one expands more, right? Yeah. So in a similar way, the light from the quasar and that farther galaxy, it has traveled through an expanding universe. And by looking at the relative sizes of those rings, it's almost like we can measure how much the universe has expanded since that light started its journey. So it's like we're seeing how much the balloon of the universe has inflated. Exactly. And how does that connect to dark energy? Well, the rate of expansion is influenced by dark energy. Mm -hmm. If our theories about dark energy are right, then the expansion should have changed in specific ways over time. And J7721 plus 8842, it gives us a way to test those theories to see if they match up with what we actually see. So this one system, it gives us a chance to, to like confirm or even challenge our understanding of dark energy, something that affects the entire universe. Exactly. And that's just the beginning. There's so much more we can learn from this. Okay. I'm definitely hooked now. Tell me more. This system is... Uh, it's not just about dark energy. Right. It can also tell us about galaxies. Yeah, how so? Like how they form, how they change over, you know, billions of years. I'm listening. I'm all ears. What's new? What can this tell us about galaxies that we didn't know before? Well, this system, it's incredibly rare. You know, astronomers, they think the odds of finding a system like this mm -hmm. with this, this perfect alignment, creating those six images, the zigzag. Yeah. The odds are like one in a hundred million. One in a hundred million. So it's like hitting the cosmic jackpot. Yeah, pretty much. Does that mean there are more out there just just waiting? You got it. Every time we build a better telescope, a bigger telescope, you know, right. we see more of the universe yeah. and we find things we never even imagined. Well, speaking of telescopes, I know the James Webb Telescope played a big part in confirming what was happening with this system with J1721. Yeah. How did it help? Well, remember that that reddish arc, the Einstein ring, right? The Einstein ring from that second galaxy. Mm -hmm. James Webb, it can see in infrared light. Mm hmm. And infrared light, it's not blocked as much by all the dust and gas. Right. So it could see that arc much more clearly. Okay. And it was able to measure the redshift of the light from that arc very precisely. Redshift. Remind me what that is again. Oh, it's basically how much the light from something far away has been stretched as it travels through space. Mm -hmm. The more stretched the light is, the higher the redshift. Right. And that means it's farther away. Right. It's like that Doppler effect, but for light. Exactly. So by measuring the redshift, they could confirm, yep, that's a separate galaxy. It's not just something weird happening with the quasar. Right. Exactly. That's what really made it clear that it was double lensing going on. Wow. It's amazing how we can, like, analyze light from so far away, billions of light years. Yeah. And use it to figure out what happened in the past. It's a, like a time machine. It really is. <laughs> you know, there's something else about J1721 that I wanted to mention. Okay. Remember how we talked about the quasar having a proximate damped Lyman Alpha system? Yeah, PDLA. That was a mouthful. Yeah, it's a bit of a, a technical term. I think my brain glitched a little bit when you said that. Basically, it's a cloud of gas, hydrogen gas, that's really close to the quasar. Okay. And these PDLAs, they're not that common. Only like one in a few thousand quasars have them. So what's the big deal about this quasar having one? Well, because the quasar's light is being split into those six paths. Right. The zigzag. Right. The light from the PDLA is being lensed too. Yeah. So we get six different magnified views of that same cloud. Whoa. So it's like having six different telescopes all pointed at the same cloud, each one giving us a slightly different view. Yeah, that's a really good way to put it. And that means astronomers can study these PDLAs in much more detail than ever before. Okay. They can look at the structure, what it's made of, how it's behaving. Wow. Things like its temperature, how dense it is, even what kind of chemicals are in it, yeah. and all thanks to this uh, this lensing effect. So J1721 is like this 
cosmic multi-tool. I like that. Not only can it tell us about dark energy and how the universe is expanding, but it also gives us this like close-up view of these PDLAs these rare clouds of gas. It really shows how how connected everything is out there in space. Yeah. Even something like a PDLA can be a tool to learn about the universe. It's incredible. I'm still trying to wrap my head around how this system can tell us about galaxy formation and evolution. What's the link there? Well, it's that second galaxy, the one that's farther away. Yeah. The fact that it's lensing the quasar's light, yeah. that means it has to be really, really massive, mm -hmm. even though it's so far away. But you remember, we said it was a quiescent galaxy. Yeah, meaning it's not making new stars. Exactly. And that's that's the strange part. Most galaxies that far away that we see as they were billions of years ago, they're still busy making stars. Right. But this one, it's like it just stopped. It's kind of an oddball. It's like a teenager who's already retired. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's yeah. not what we expected. And that's why it's so interesting. So this quiet, massive galaxy, it's just as intriguing as the zigzag lensing itself. Yeah, I think so. It's like finding a, a fossil of something that lived a long time ago in a totally different environment. Right. It wow. makes us rethink our ideas about how galaxies formed in the early universe. This whole system is blowing my mind. It seems like with every new thing we learned about it, there are even more questions. That's what makes science so exciting. We're always learning, always discovering. Speaking of discoveries, is there is there anything else about J1721 that you think our listeners should know? Any other surprises hidden in this system? This whole deep dive has been incredible. And mm -hmm. it's amazing to think how much we can learn from just one system. Right. J7721 plus 8842, it's like this, this cosmic Rosetta Stone. We've talked about what gravitational lensing, dark energy, galaxy evolution, mm -hmm. even those those PDLAs, those clouds of gas near quasars. And we've only just scratched the surface. There's still so much more to learn from this system. So those those two techniques, the time delay cosmography yeah. and the dual source plane lensing, yeah. they could really change how we understand the universe. Absolutely. I mean, think about it. We can measure the time delay between those flickering images of the quasar. Right. And from that, we can learn about the entire history of the universe's expansion. That's wild. And what about that that mass sheet degeneracy problem, the uh, the MSD? Oh, right, the MSD. It's a tough one for sure. Like trying to weigh a fish, but it's in a tank full of water. Right, all that extra stuff in space that messes with our measurements. Exactly. Uh -huh. But but J7721 plus 8842, it might actually help us solve this problem. Mm -hmm. Because we have two lensed sources, the quasar and that distant galaxy, uh -huh. we have two sets of data to work with. It's like having two scales to weigh the fish so we get a more accurate reading. That's a great analogy. You know, before we started this deep dive, I thought quasars and gravitational lensing were just, just cool things to look at. Yeah. But now I realize they can tell us about some of the biggest mysteries in the universe. It really shows you how much we still don't know, you know? Mm. Every new discovery, it just leads to more questions. It makes you wonder, what else is out there? What other, like, cosmic alignments are happening right now, just waiting for us to find them? Who knows what we'll discover next? Maybe it'll confirm everything we think we know, or maybe it'll completely change our understanding of the universe. It's exciting to think about all the possibilities. So to all you listeners out there, space isn't boring. Not at all. There's so much to explore, so much to discover. You don't need a fancy telescope or a degree in astrophysics to learn about the universe. There are tons of resources online, books, documentaries. You can even participate in citizen science projects, you know, help analyze real data. So go out there, be curious, ask questions, and never stop exploring the universe around us. Who knows? Maybe one of you will be the one to make the next big discovery. Keep looking up, everyone. This has been The Deep Dive, signing off.